turn that off. Okay. Okay. So thank you, everyone, um, and welcome to the webinar. So basically, today, what um, I'm hoping to do is kind of like just share a little bit of how I structure or organize my learning materials on Spectrum. So I'm not exactly an expert on Spectrum, but um, I do enjoy using it. And I, I may not be um, the most organized <laughs> um, in terms of organizing my materials, but um, I do have certain, I guess, uh, approaches or frameworks that I find quite helpful, which I hope that I can share with you and hopefully you might find um, helpful as well. So let me just uh, quickly take a quick scan at um, all our participants here. Okay, so we've got about 40 plus people here. I guess uh, everyone is excited to start out uh, after the end of the semester and to prepare for next semester. So that's good. We're starting early. Thanks so much to ADEC for organizing this very, very quickly. So we all have time um, to start preparing. So um, let me just, um, well, I'll be jumping back and forth, by the way, uh, between my screen between my presentation and the uh, maybe we might take a look at some uh, some spectrum pages so the just be a bit ready for that so it'll be a little bit jumping back and forth um, if you have any problems you're unable to follow anything um, just you know open up your mic um, and let me know if I speak too fast or if my audio disappears please do let me know as soon as you can all right so um Allow me now to just share my screen. Okay. Okay. So uh, let me just check. Okay, I think my screen is sharing now. So let's just start off. Okay, so um, let me put that into screen mode. All right, there we go. Okay, so um, as the title says, we're going to be basically looking at organizing your learning materials. But it's not so much just about organizing the learning materials, but rather um, structuring your Spectrum page that I kind of like want to share today. But before we begin with that, can I just um, invite everyone to take a pre-webinar survey? If you can kindly go to www.menti.com and just enter this um, code here, 63910409. Or if you want to use your phone, which um, you could also do, you can just simply scan the QR code and we can just take a quick look at where everybody is. So we establish sort of like a baseline in terms of um in terms of everyone's um, abilities with Spectrum. So I'm gonna go into that, um, okay. I'm gonna go into the Menti, Mentimeter as well. So let me just click on this and let's see what responses we have. Okay. Taking a bit of time to load. Um, excuse me for that. Okay, there we go. And let's just see if anyone's managed to answer some of the questions. Okay, we'll give it a little bit of time. All right, so um, I can see it's moving, but not very much. So I'm guessing that most people um, have already answered. So we can see here that in terms of um, our skill levels with Spectrum or Moodle, um, it looks like um, there's probably 
more of us, uh, slightly more, that are at the beginner level. Okay, and uh, we have a couple who have not yet used or never used Spectrum or Moodle yet, and some at the intermediate level and some at the advanced level. So for those of you, um, I'll try to I'll try to kind of like um, I'll try to be as um, I'll try to address the beginner level as much as I can. So uh, for the intermediate and advanced level, um, I hope you will bear with me. And also those who have never used Spectrum, um, if you know some things look a little bit alien, you're not really like um, not really sure what it is that I'm doing. Um, fret not, don't worry, because um, if you have already signed up for the Emerald Teaching and Learning course that ADAC is offering, uh, there will be a specific section um, or a specific module in the Emerald Teaching and Learning course, which deals specifically with Spectrum. And that is very much a beginner um, tutorial on how to use Spectrum. But today, you can sort of like just uh, take this as a early exposure to Spectrum before you take the Emerald Teaching and Learning um, introduction to Spectrum. All right, so let's now take a look um, at um, the second question, okay? So how many of you have used other learning management systems or virtual classrooms? Um, and the numbers look pretty much the same, okay? We have some who are beginners with a little bit of experience um, and some who have never used any virtual classroom. Uh, or LMS, and a few that are proficient and expert. All right, that's cool. So now we kind of like know um, where uh, our kind of like uh, baseline level is for today's webinar. So thank you so much for participating in that. Okay, so now let's just take a quick look at um, a bit of what we're going to be um, talking about in this webinar. So like I said just now, today is going to be mainly of a sharing session. It's not really a training per se. And um, I'll be sharing with you uh, how or some approaches that I use to structure my um, Spectrum page or my Spectrum course. Um, I'll also share some approaches uh, and examples of how I, I organize what I call my Spectrum sections or uh, in the context of this webinar is organizing my learning materials, which actually for us, it would be our teaching materials um, um, and the learning materials that we give to students to learn from. So these would include our lecture notes or slides, um, any reading materials or videos um, or even audio that we assign the students to read or to view or listen to. Uh, learning activities, um, maybe we have, you know, ungraded quizzes or forum discussions, um, uh, or we might have some interactive learning activities uh, that we might assign students to do, or we could ask students to perhaps, um, you know, answer some simple questions, um, just things that help with their formative um, assessment. A formative assessment is basically assessment or activities that we use to help students to learn, not to test them. So learning activities would include that. And of course, some of us may also be using Spectrum for um, assessments, for students to submit their assignments, or even sometimes to um, test our students using online um, spectrum quizzes or spectrum tests. <clears throat> so these would be, I guess, um, the typical learning materials that many lecturers would be using in their spectrum course page. So um, as mentioned just now, you know, uh, we have quite, you know, uh, a number of beginners, but we have quite a good range as well. People who've never used Spectrum and people who may have a lot more experience with it. So you will probably benefit most or find this uh, webinar most relevant or useful if you have some basic knowledge of Spectrum or Moodle. Um, and if you have difficulty with organizing your Spectrum course page or organizing, you know, if you have difficulty organizing your learning materials, if you are already quite comfortable with Spectrum and you are already able to organize your lecture notes, your activities and all your other materials in your Spectrum course page, um, this webinar might not 
you know, you may not learn anything new from this webinar, um, but hopefully it might just be, you know, interesting look uh, or a refresher. <laughs> um, but if you do have any interesting, you know, practices that you do um, that I don't touch upon, uh, you know, please, uh, towards the end of the webinar later, please do share so that we can all share uh, amongst ourselves, you know, how different people are using Spectrum um, for our teaching and learning needs. So um, first, I'm just going to touch a little bit on blended learning, uh, which is not the core of this webinar, but I just thought it would be useful to look at that. Then we'll take a look at structuring our Spectrum course. And then after that, we'll take a look. Um, I'll probably focus more on organizing um, sections or organizing you know, the specific week or the specific topic in your Spectrum course. So um, this will probably be most relevant or um, to the new lectures in here. Um, you probably have heard a lot of people talking about blended learning. So if you are not familiar with what that term means, basically blended learning is where we have, where we combine or integrate the physical teaching and learning that we do, the physical classes. Oops, excuse me. Uh, and we integrate and combine it with online teaching and learning, or sometimes we call it e-learning. So it's basically blending online learning materials and activities with our physical or offline class teaching and learning. And blended learning um, can come in various forms. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I kind of wanted to touch on this, because in our use of Spectrum now, uh, we might be using Spectrum, um, you know, as a complement to our physical class. We could be using Spectrum um, as we are teaching students face-to-face uh, -face physically, but we're also using Spectrum um, either to sort of like, you know, show something or show students um, where our course materials are, or even we might, you know, be accessing um, our course uh, slides, for example, um, straight via Spectrum instead of, you know, um, just opening up our PowerPoint slides, maybe it's already in Spectrum. Or sometimes uh, there are some of us that might even be doing online activities um, in the physical classroom. And some of us might be using that online activities that are available in Spectrum. Uh, some of us might be using online activities, you know, outside of Spectrum, for example, like Mentimeter. Um, many of us do use that sometimes, I think, even in our physical classes. So um, that's one, one I guess, um, form of blended learning. The other form is, um, you know, technology enhanced, where um, similarly, uh, like what I was, the example I gave just now about Mentimeter, we are teaching physically in our classroom, but uh, at the same time, we also use certain teaching and learning technologies or certain educational technologies, ed tech, um, in the physical classroom. And if you remember uh, back, you know, two years ago during the COVID-19 lockdowns, um, we all, of course, had a uh, um, if you were already teaching, then you, of course, had to teach uh, fully online. If you were studying or learning um, at that time, if you were doing, say, your PhD, you had all your supervisions online. Or if you were doing any coursework, you, of course, had to uh, attend online classes. So um, in this sense, this is probably more of online learning and not, not so much blended learning per se, if the entire course is being taught fully 100% online and there is no physical component um, to it. But uh, now there are times when we have some physical classes and in other weeks we might have online classes. And this is something called um, pembelajaran teradun gantian, that's the Malay word for it. The English word is um, blended learning substitution. Okay. You might be hearing about this, uh, pembelajaran teradun gantian, PTG, or blended learning substitution. This will be a term that you will be hearing about um, in the months um, to come, because uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Ministry of Higher Education has uh, mandated that all universities must have uh, or must um, implement 
blended learning substitution. So what does that mean? Well, blended learning substitution basically means that we will have, um, for some of our courses, we will have our physical classes, maybe say five weeks or 30% uh, or you know up to 60%. Um, I'm not really sure about the percentages, but basically we have a portion of the semester when we are teaching um, physically, but there will be another portion of the semester or a part of our teaching will actually have to be done um, via online um, online mode. So we could possibly do um, synchronous or live real-time online classes, like kind of like what we're doing right now. Okay, this is a synchronous online class or it's a it's a live real time um online in a way class it, it could happen that way or at the same time uh we may also uh create what we call self instructional materials sim or sims which we post on spectrum for our students to uh learn at their own pace um, and time, which is called asynchronous learning. So that's kind of like a self-paced kind of uh, learning where all of the content, instead of us lecturing to the students during a, you know, a physical class or during an online meeting, we don't, we might record our lecture or we might not even lecture. We might actually use um, videos or other materials, or we might create um, little learning packages that we can post on Spectrum for our students to, um, to learn um, at their own time. So that would be asynchronous. So for all of these uh, different um, um, contexts of blended learning, um, in UM at the moment, at least, and for the past, I think about 10 years um, or more, uh, or maybe 11 years, okay, um, the main blended learning um, technology or platform that we use is uh, Spectrum. So that's why it's important that when there are Spectrum webinars or Spectrum training that ADEC offers, it's very useful for us to actually um, attend and take these uh, Spectrum trainings um, or webinars. Okay. So the blended learning platforms that we have in UM include Spectrum and also to a lesser extent, uh, Microsoft Teams. So some of us are using Microsoft Teams not only to do online classes, but also to um, assign assignments to students to track our students kind of like um, or, or also some of us are using Microsoft Teams to upload our course materials and through both Spectrum and Microsoft Teams, um, you know, we can both organize our online learning materials and we can also, if we want to go a little bit further, uh, we can also monitor our students' engagement with that learning material. But today, I'm just going to focus on um, organizing the learning materials, and I'm going to focus specifically on Spectrum. But I think the principles that we use for structuring our Spectrum course and organizing our learning materials um, on Spectrum can also be used you know, for other platforms. Uh, maybe not so much Microsoft Teams because uh, Microsoft Teams is more of a collaborative online platform uh, and it's not what we call a learning management system or a virtual classroom, but um, we, the, the, I guess the principles um, and the approaches to organizing a course and organizing our learning materials on Spectrum can also be used for other uh, LMSs, learning management um, systems. Uh, if you have ever used Blackboard or Schoology um, or, uh, or even um, Google Classroom, which is a virtual classroom, the principles um, remain the same. Uh, so these are, of course, uh, some of the apps that many of us use for blended learning. So we'll just skip through that, okay? Other apps <laughs> or uh, digital technologies. So uh, Spectrum, for those of you who are new to University of Malaya, uh, is basically uh, what 
many of us may not know this, but the acronym for Spectrum is Student Powered E Collaboration Transforming UM. But I think all of us just know it as Spectrum. Uh, and on Spectrum, we can upload materials, we can assign learning activities, and we can even do and conduct assessments um, for our students. Okay, so now we're going to take um, a look at structuring your course page. But before we do that, let me just check the chat um, if there are any questions here or if anyone has any questions, um, yeah, please feel free to, to ask them now, I suppose. <laughs> we can take a little short break. Maybe I'll take a, a 30 seconds or so. Okay, all right. So I'll consider that as um, everyone's all good. Um, oh wait, maybe actually the, before I get into structuring um, the Spectrum course page, can I just uh, very quickly ask and if, uh, if you know, you can just type, you know, two or three words on the chat or even if you want to open your mic, that would be great. Um, can I just know, uh, you know, what, uh, what you are looking for from this webinar, what you hope to gain from this webinar um, specifically? We'll give it a bit of time so anyone can sort of like just type in the chat. If you can just type, you know, one or two words, that would be fine. Or if you have no expectations, you're just here to sort of like um, get exposed, that's fine as well. You can just type that in too. The chat, by the way, is on the, I think it should be either at the bottom or at the top of your screen. Okay, so I'm guessing no expectations either. <laughs> okay, that's all right. Um, if you do wish to uh, interrupt me later on to ask anything specific um, about Spectrum, please feel free to do so. Let me just close this chat box. There's a few comments in the chat box, Amir. Oh, there is? Oh, yeah. okay, thank you. Uh, I don't know how I missed it. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, I missed it just now. Thank you very much, Linda. So great. Let me just take a quick look from the top, possibly. <clears throat> okay, there is a few, um, I think, a few people using uh, AI uh, apps um, together with their Zoom meeting, and that's kind of like automatically taking notes and recording. Um, okay, quite a lot of people using the apps. All right, more using apps. Uh, okay, great. So we've got someone here, Dr. Rashida. Course content in Spectrum. Is it compulsory Compulsory to put in at least your lecture notes? Um, yes, it is. Uh, I believe it is compulsory to put in not just your lecture notes, but also to have a combination of uh, some activities. Um, and assessments. Um, Linda, can I reconfirm this is still this is still the case. It's still true now in 2024. Can you repeat? Can you um, uh, do we still have the blended learning um, the blended learning um, I guess uh, what you the blended learning? Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean the percentage is it? Yes, yes, that's right. The percentage is that still uh, compulsory? Yeah, for now it is. To, uh, it is. I'm not saying it's compulsory, but we're still reporting it to KPT okay. for the blended learning status mm -hmm. by faculty. Okay. By faculty. All right. Um. Okay. So thank you for for highlighting that, Linda. So um, uh, previously at one point, uh, I think uh, um. Ensuring that your course is blended in Spectrum um, at one point uh, for several years, I think was a individual KPI and it is also a uh, faculty KPI. Um, so the reason for it is because, um, so basically uh, to ensure that our course is blended, we should put in at least our lecture notes um, plus have some activities and some assessment. So three components, if I'm not mistaken, um, in Spectrum. And the reason this is needed is because the university um, has to report to the ministry each year the percentage of blended learning uh, 
that uh, is uh, the percentage of blended learning in University Malaya. So in order for the university to be able to report that, um, you know, there is hopefully a high percentage of blended learning in University of Malaya, um, all of us as University of Malaya lecturers will need to play our part uh, in terms of using um, the online um, learning management system and putting things um, into spectrum, such as our lecture notes, um, activities, and a bit of assessments. Now, that's reporting, you know, that, that's kind of like the university needs that. Um, so, but actually uh, using Spectrum and uploading our notes into Spectrum is very, very important, not just for the university, not so much for the university, but for our students. Um, you must remember now that um, all of the students that we have now have gone through at least, you know, uh, one year, uh, possibly more of um, online learning, either during their diploma years or during their um, high school years or their pre-university years. Um, and I think in a way they are um, socialized to or expecting to actually be able to have access to our course content, have access to our um, learning materials, uh, have access to our notes. Um, and they are kind of expecting that, I think, um, from a learning management system. And for many students, um, the learning management system or spectrum is uh, in a way, one of the key ways that they actually have some kind of um, direct uh, what do we call this, um, engagement or direct contact with the course, um, especially if we have a very large class. And of course, we know now that student intake is rising. We are getting more and more students um, in our classrooms. Uh, and the use of Spectrum or the use of the online learning management system is going to be helpful for students um, if we want to actually give them content or give them, you know, um, any kind of things that we need them to do or read. Um, and it's also helpful for us to actually monitor the students if we decide to go a little bit further and use the uh, the assessments in Spectrum to give them quizzes, to grade them. Um, it actually helps us a lot as well in terms of our work. Okay, sorry, long answer to a short question. So let me just uh, scroll back down now. Okay, so we have Dr. Yanti who would like uh, to post assignment and get submission on students. Okay, so that would actually be another webinar, but let me just um, take a quick note on that so that um, I'll remember to come back to that later on. Okay, just to show you a little bit uh, of how that can be organized into the Spectrum page where and how we can access it. Okay, so um, I will show this as well, particularly for the new lecturers, new lecturers who have just joined UM this semester and have not started teaching, you probably don't have access to a Spectrum page or course yet. You may have already been assigned a course to teach next semester, uh, but uh, you will uh, you at this moment now, because this is still the current, uh, the end of the first semester. So we are still now on um, all the spectrum, all the active spectrum courses are the ones that are for this semester. The ones for next semester um, are not active yet, um, but they will usually be, um, and we will usually be added to our spectrum page or our spectrum courses um, a few weeks before the semester begins. So usually after the end of the first semester, I think after the um, examination board is done, I think around that time, just before or just after, uh, the university will assign the uh, spectrum pages to us. And the spectrum, our spectrum courses, it's actually assigned um, automatically via a lot of, you know, uh, back end processes that we do not see. Um, so it's actually interlinked with Maya. Uh, it's also interlinked with our um, human resource um, 
um, our human resource um, systems. So if we have any problems as accessing our Spectrum course page, um, unfortunately, if you go to your head of department or you go to the dean's office, or even if you go to ADEC, none of these um, places will be able to help you with your access into Spectrum. You'll need to do a help desk query, uh, which will then be sent up to the um, uh, to the uh, the people in charge um, who are, some of them are, I think, in AASD, and um, that's the Academic and Administrative Services Division, and some of them are in um, Jabatan Technology Maklumat, uh, which is the um, the IT division of the university. So just wanted to let you know that. Um, sadly, unfortunately, you know, we we need to go through the system if we have problems accessing Spectrum. But don't do that yet now because uh, you'll have to wait until next semester but or just a few more weeks when the university um, um, assigns us or, or adds us to our course uh, pages. Okay, all right. Oh, great, we've got someone here, Dr. Elani, here to refresh what you learned in the Emerald course. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you for coming back. And uh, we've got Dr. Aisha, uh, who just wants some ideas how to manage your Spectrum page better. Okay, that, that is actually the core um, and the main focus of today's webinar. And Dr. Aruni, um, to know the different teaching and learning options we recommend for UM students. Well, that actually will be um, a different, uh, I think that would be probably a different training, um, but using Spectrum and organizing our course page with the learning materials and activities, um, that is one option that we can offer to our students in terms of teaching and learning, okay? Um, how do I include other lecturers as co-instructor for my course? Okay, uh, I will try to include that as well. That's actually very easy, um, very, very easy to do. So let's see, let me just write that down here. Okay. Um, okay, and um, organize spectrum material better. Okay, too lengthy. Yes, uh, this is something that we will be looking at uh, definitely um, to sort of like organize the spectrum materials better. <laughs> no worries about, no worries. You sound just fine, Dr. Zaida. Uh, I personally have quite a lot that I want to whine about, but yeah, but that's okay. We'll try and be positive. Uh, we'll do what we can. All right, so thank you everyone for um, sharing with that. If there's anything that I said I will look at later, but I don't get to, and it's already like 11.30 or so, please do um, please do kindly, you know, don't be shy to raise your hand and let me know. Okay, so, uh, all right. So um, there are various approaches to structuring your Spectrum course page. Um, I just use the word structure, but basically it's to organize your Spectrum course page. Um, but I want to, I want, I, I'm using the word structure when I'm talking about the whole Spectrum course. Um, and I use the word organize when I talk about the specific topics um, or the specific weeks in um in a particular spectrum course. So there are various approaches. One is the weekly structure, which I think many of us use. Um, and I personally think the weekly structure is very useful for me because I'm not very organized. And the weekly structure is actually a tool for me to organize my kind of like plan and my materials um, and my sort of like activities, uh, what I plan to do in that particular week. So I find that quite useful. Um, we could also use a topical structure where we organize the content in our Spectrum page according to um, topics. So for example, if there are maybe 10 topics that we teach in one semester, then perhaps we might have 10 sections and each section will be specifically for one topic. So we could organize it that way. Um, we could also organize our course page using a thematic structure. So a thematic structure is kind of like, um, maybe uh, I would have um, all my assessments in one, um, one section. And perhaps I might have um, attendance um, in another section. And perhaps I might have 
a section where I put all of my um, course materials in there. You know, my my online reference books or my lecture notes, um, any videos that I want students to watch. And um, then perhaps I might have, uh, you know, other sections based on other themes. Perhaps one could be, um, I have a section for the assignments, all the assignments for the course. I have a section for maybe all the quizzes for the course and maybe a section for um, just kind of like practice activities um, or tasks for the students to do. So that's another option to do it. And of course, uh, we can also use a combination of structures. So I personally used, um, I think in a way, a combination of structures to structure my course page. Okay, so now I am going to just um, show you some example, uh, I guess, structures, um, which I think most of my um, Spectrum course pages tend to be um, a combination of these three structures. So let's just take a look at one course, okay? Now this course happens to be a um, fully online course. It's a she course, uh, an elective course called the Student Holistic Empowerment Course that all undergraduate students um, need to take. And there are many uh, she courses that students can choose from. And this course is one of those that, um, one of those she electives that students can choose. All right. So um, this course, uh, I'm going to actually first uh, switch role to student so that we can see what the students will see. The reason is because there are sometimes things in my Spectrum page which I hide from students, which they cannot see, which I use as notes or placeholders. So now we are seeing this um, from a student uh, perspective or from what a student would see from their account. So you can see that even though this is of course my account, but here you can see the word dot student. So that shows that I'm now not in my usual role as instructor, but I am now viewing this course page as a student. So um, this is basically a weekly uh, plus uh, thematic structure of um, a spectrum page. Okay, so oh, let me just, I want to show this part here. Oh, help. Okay, let me just hide this. All right, there we go. Okay. So um, as you may be familiar, you know, there is this burger bar or this line menu at the top. If you click on it, it will show us all the sections in our spectrum course. So in this particular course, these are the sections um, that I have in my course. Okay. So this is basically the uh, general section. And in the general section, um, I basically have the, uh, you know, just a little bit of course information. And this is very, very important when our class is a fully online class. So I know most of us are of course teaching, most of our courses are physical courses, but a few of us might be teaching fully online classes, especially if we are teaching faculty-based courses that may have you know, 100, 400 students, or if we are teaching some of the she courses or university courses, those courses that start with the code G, uh, some of those might actually be fully online. So for a fully online course, um, I find that it is very, very important and useful for the students if we have the kind of like a uh, key course information in terms of when the class is, what the platforms are, uh, and how to kind of like, you know, click on the platform. So here uh, for this particular course, um, we have a class telegram group which we uh, require all students to join uh, because it makes it easier for us to communicate um, with students uh, rather than using the Spectrum chat, which is also possible, but I personally prefer to use either a WhatsApp group or a Telegram group. Some lecturers might not want to have uh, WhatsApp or Telegram groups, but some of them might actually have um, you know, a discussion 
forum uh, in the in the spectrum page and use that as a communication platform with students. Okay. So here, uh, as I mentioned, this is our communication platform with students. Uh, this is uh, next. And then after that, we have the meeting link for our online lectures. For this particular course, we don't have online uh, live synchronous lectures every week because uh, we sometimes have um, self-directed online modules that students do uh, asynchronously um, you, at their own pace. And we have uh, self-instructional materials in a, uh, in a website that we've created. Okay. So uh, I won't go to that because I wanna just focus on the, um, the course structure now, okay? So um, that what you saw just now was actually the general page. So the general page uh, or the general section, okay? Uh, you will be able to reach that general section when you click on this top part here where it shows the uh, course code. Now the participants are not shown in the course page, but if you click on that, it will take you to another page that shows you the list of participants. Competencies, uh, I think we're not using that in UM, unfortunately, even though we have our learning outcomes, but it is not entered into um, Spectrum, so we're not using the competencies. Grades, um, I've actually put this here because I use grades, uh, I grade in Spectrum itself, so it's actually here in my sections, but it's not in the course page if you kind of like scroll down it. Um, it's more of, if I click on it, another page will open up. But the next section that is actually in the course page after this general section with the uh, general information um, about the course is the attendance section. So if I click on attendance section, okay, um, it takes students directly here into where they can, it takes students straight into a page where they can, um, where we take their attendance. Okay. But I organize it, uh, I just press back just now to get back to the main page. Um, it's not just me actually, uh, I'm sharing this course with two other uh, colleagues. So we organize it so that um, the attendance link is uh, near to the top um, of the spectrum page so that it is easy for students to find. So this particular section, um, I call it attendance and absences. Uh, because students will, you know, will record student attendance using spectrum attendance. But at the same time, I also, because there's like over a hundred, I think there's a hundred students in this course. So sometimes students might be absent for particular reasons. So what I have asked them to do is to, um, if instead of emailing us or sending us, you know, um, their MCs or their, um, their letters, uh, uh, you know, like sometimes they have to attend maybe um, if they are school, if they are university athletes, maybe they might be attending competitions. So I asked them to just sort of like submit any of um, their absence information into this link um, where basically I just tell us, you know, um, they can up upload their medical certificates or official documents pertaining to class um, absence. So this then allows me to actually, organ it allows us to organize some of our course documents um, directly in Spectrum rather than having to, you know, uh, download the students' emails um, or open up, you know, a physical file and then collect the student's certificate, medical MCs um, or their uh, letters of absences. So. Uh, I find this to be quite quite useful. Um, although students still tend to want to email or, or message me this, but then I always remind them to please, you know, just put it in the absence link. Okay. So the next, um, so this is, again, this is a thematic uh, structure. Okay, so you can see the theme here is attendances and absences. Then the next theme here of the next section is course platform links. Um, so I basically just, we just basically copy uh, or provide the links to the major platforms um, for the course. And then we have a section um, called uh, course information. 
And this is where we uh, upload uh, our learn um, our MQA documents um, or the course introduction uh, PowerPoint. The reason that we put the course introduction PowerPoint slides under course information, it's because this PowerPoint slides um, contains information that they need to know um, about the course. So let me just click on that. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with Spectrum, by the way, let me just go back out again, okay? Um, the thing about Spectrum is that we do not know which text is actually a link until we hover over them and it turns orange and there's an underline beneath it. So we have to actually, you know, move our um, cursors up and down to find out whether something is a link, like this is a link, or if it's just text, like or this word, these two words, course information, these are just text. It's just, um, you know, the name of the section. So uh, if we click on this, um, it will take us um, into where the link actually is. And this is where uh, we, I use a lot of um, Microsoft OneDrive and SharePoint instead of uploading documents like you know, PowerPoint slides because it's easier for me to then uh, update the documents without having to upload them again. So as mentioned just now, this PowerPoint slide contains um, information about the course that students may sometimes have to go back and refer to. For example, um, information about, um, about uh, uh, you know, how we allocate the uh, course marks, uh, information about the assessments, um, sometimes information about kind of like how to do the course and so on. So this is actually taking a bit of time to load because it is an online PowerPoint um, uh, document. So I won't wait for it to load. I'll just go and click on the back button to go back to the Spectrum page. Okay. Um, and I'm going to now go back again to that main Spectrum page to show you the structure. And I can do that by either clicking on this particular uh, tab here or by clicking um, on this link here, or I can simply click on back to course. So I'm gonna click on back to course and now we're back on the main um, spectrum page. So just now we were just scrolling down and looking at the attendance and the class platform links and the section for course um, information. Okay. So this actually was supposed to be, I think, in a smaller font, but that's all right. Uh, we'll just leave it there. Uh, but this is part of the course information. Um, I, I usually organize my spectrum pages so that um, so that fonts are basically the same size, uh, but I think there might have been a little bit of a mistake in here, so I'll have to go back and fix that. Um, but again, this is under course um, information. It's under the section called course information. So this is a link to the uh, social media uh, pages related to this course. And here is a link for students to practice submitting their course assessments, which is optional. So for if, if we are teaching a first year course, it's useful to provide students with, and if, and if we want to do assessments, uh, whether it's quizzes or uploading assignments, um, anything that, you know, that we mark and is graded and that will contribute to the students' um, marks for that course, it's a good idea, it's a good practice to allow students to have the opportunity to practice um, using that particular link or using that particular application. So an example here is we have pra practice links for submitting course assessments. And again, I remind you, this is under course information section. So if we click here, um, there are three types of assessments or three types of um, uh uh, th there are three types of uh, spectrum assessments that we use in this course. One is students need to submit um, a written assignment uh, to the Turnitin assignment through this link. And another is um, students need to, uh, uh, to participate in a um, discussion forum, which is graded um, in Spectrum itself. 
And another is students, which uh, this one I think uh, many lecturers use this for assessment, is students need to submit um, an assignment via the spectrum assignment. So here are basically practice links where they can practice doing that um, just so that they don't make a mistake uh, with the actual assessment. Okay, So I won't go into this. This actually, um, I think there will be other um, uh, webinars or other uh, training sessions um, that will look into that. So now I'll go back again to the main spectrum page. Okay, so now let's take a look uh, at the rest of the course. So as you can see from the top here, as I mentioned just now, um, a lot of this course information is organized using a thematic structure. But, and I tend to put those information at the top of the spectrum page, okay. Um, for this course, we combine that thematic structure with a weekly structure. So for 14 weeks um, of the course, if you scroll down here, you can see um, in the menu on the left-hand side, uh, maybe I should make this a little bit bigger. All right, okay, so you can see in the menu on the left-hand side, um, these are all the topics um, and for the 14 weeks of classes that we have. So for the weekly topics, um, I will go into the individual um, individual topic or weekly section later in the webinar. But for now, I just want to show you the structure of the uh, 14 weeks um, topics. Okay. So the first week, uh, I personally like to, it depends, you know, so we can do it in different ways. But um, I find it very useful to number the topics um, if I am going to be using a weekly topic or, or if I'm going to be using a weekly structure for my spectrum page. So even if, um, or sometimes even if I don't use a weekly structure and I use a topical structure, like for example, maybe I have uh, nine topics that I, that I teach um, across 14 weeks, perhaps one topic is one week, a few topics are two or three weeks. Um, I still think it's useful to number the topics because numbering helps us to visually see the organization um, and the structure of that spectrum course. Um, for the students, it might not be that important because I think for students, their view, depending on how they set up their uh, Spectrum page, but I think usually their view is when they click into Spectrum, they actually will get to see their view uh, one section at a time like this. Oh, okay, maybe not. So maybe they see it, uh, the full sections too. So in that case, it's actually um, useful for the students as well to be able to see the weeks or the topics um, numbered so that they know, you know, how they are, uh, they know the progress of the course um, and they can see it in the spectrum page. So this is week one. And uh, I like to add dates in here because I find that useful as well for my own organization and also for the students, um, especially if students might be absent, um, you know, or perhaps sometimes they're, they're, they're not well, or maybe they're not paying attention or unable to pay attention um, during the, the course itself. So it's useful for them when they can go back and check, oh, okay, you know, last week I wasn't very well, I couldn't really focus, but what was the week? What was the topic? I don't remember, but yeah, I remember the date. I can look at the date. Um, it was uh, 13 October. So then I know that's the week that I kind of like need to go back and review um, because I missed it a bit. So that's useful for the students and useful for us um, as well. Okay, so you can see here that each of the weeks is, uh, it has, it tells what the topic is for that week. It numbers what week it is and it provides the date for that week. So I'll just show you that's week two. Um, Thing, though you have to keep scrolling down a little bit um so that's week three um and and you know so forth all the way to um week 14. okay so um i'm going to stop uh for a short while um just to get any questions but just before that to recap this example that i'm that we are looking at right now this is an example of 
a um, Spectrum course page that is structured using a combination of thematic structure. These are the sections and uh, weekly topic structures. So um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to open up your mic. Uh, I'm going to return to my normal role so that after this, I can show you a little bit of how I, we create or organize this uh, structure um, on the page. Okay, okay let me just check um, the chat. See, there's one new chat in there. Okay, all right, so um, that's no additional questions, but I think maybe right now would be a good time for me to address this question, this uh, this comment about um, having to scroll up and down the spectrum page. Um, so uh, bear with me. I need to actually uh, look around for this as well. But if I'm not mistaken, um, I think the default with Spectrum is that it tends to be, you know, you have to kind of like scroll up and down, or if you don't want to do that, use the menu on the left and um, you still have to scroll up and down, but at least it's a little bit shorter because the only thing that you have to look for here is the um, particular section that you want to look for. Okay, rather than having to scroll up and down, uh, scroll rather than scrolling up and down the page, which is a lot lengthier, we can scroll up and down the menu and just look at the section headings or the titles of the section. Okay, um, but if you don't want to do that, if I'm not mistaken, I think we can um, go to the settings. Uh, by the way, um, when, when you get into Spectrum, the first time you get in there, if I'm not mistaken, this button, uh, if I'm not mistaken, sorry, okay, if I'm not mistaken, the default is that we cannot edit in the Spectrum page. So first, in order to edit, we have to turn editing on by clicking on this button on the right side. So we click editing on, and when we click editing on, okay, we know that it's on because when you scroll down the Spectrum page, you'll be able to see these kind of like, um, these are actually, and I don't know what we call it, but it's something that allows us to move uh, links or items uh, on the Spectrum page. And we will see this edit button. And at the very top on the left-hand side, we will see this uh, settings menu. Okay. So let's just click on the settings menu um, to take a look at uh, the possible way um, Oh, okay, I'm sorry. This settings is actually for that general section just now, the one on the left-hand side. So if you remember just now, I told you that the very top of the first section uh, in uh, on the Spectrum page is called the general section. Okay, And every Spectrum page will have at least one section, which is the general section. And usually the other sections, uh, maybe another 14 sections for each week of classes, um, we will we'll have to create ourselves. Um, sometimes it's already pre-created for us and we just have to fill it up. Okay. But anyways, as you can see here, um, this is where I type up the uh, information for the general section. Okay. And if you wanna see why the different fonts look different, uh, it's because we can actually change um, the font by pressing on this arrow, down arrow button, pressing on the A, and then you kind of like decide what kind of font you want to use. So, um, and so the restrict access, basically we try not to restrict access because we want students to see it, but if we don't want students to see it, uh, we can add restrictions, uh, but I won't go into that because this is a little bit more advanced. Okay. Um, but let's go back out now. Okay. So let me just go to this setting here. I think that's the main settings where we can edit settings for the Spectrum page for this course. So I'm gonna click on edit settings. Okay, so here, as you can see, um, we have the option to edit course settings, not everything. For example, there are things that um, 
can only be edited by the uh, spectrum administrators. Uh, so of course the course full name and short name, we cannot do anything with that and the course ID, but we can edit the course start date. So usually we don't need to, usually it will automatically, um, uh, not automatically, uh, usually uh, the university will set it so that it starts um, on a particular date, usually the beginning of the semester, but uh, if it doesn't, if your students are complaining they cannot see anything on the Spectrum page, then maybe you can go to this um, course settings and just check your Spectrum page and just make sure that it is already started. I just select the date here um, to make sure that it's started. Okay. So now uh, there is something here called course format, which allows us to choose how we want our spectrum sections um, to look like. So I like to use the flexible sections format, but I think the default is the weekly format or the topics format. So usually when you first get your spectrum course, if it is a completely new course that, uh, that you know, if it's a completely new spectrum course that nobody has done or added anything to that spectrum course yet, then it will probably come as a topics format or a weekly format. And I believe some of you may have already attended Dr. Hadi's webinar um, last week um, where he showed how to use some of the different formats. Okay. Now the appearance, uh, let me see. Um, okay, this is basically some appearances which I don't generally look at. Um, all right, I was actually trying to see if there was a way to actually see whether or not you can um, make your spectrum page kind of like shorter in the view, but I think um, it's probably not possible using the flexible sections format but it's probably possible using the grid format um, or the topics format. But I don't want to click on that right now because I don't want it to um, kind of like mess up my settings. So I'm just going to leave it um, at that. Um, but uh, so I will just come back out now. Okay. Um, I'll just cl click back or I can click to, I can click on the button on the, le uh, the menu on the left um, or I can click here, uh, the link. And this will take us back to the main spectrum page. I'm gonna close this top part here, okay, just so that we have a better view. So um, I just want to show a little bit of how your view would be. So as mentioned just now, uh, these are uh, this this page is actually structured according to a thematic um, structure, okay, and. Uh, where all the sections have a particular name to it. I actually named these sections. So we can actually do that. Um, and the way to do that is, okay, if I, oh, sorry, excuse me. Okay. Um, to add a section, okay, you scroll all the way down to the very bottom of the spectrum page, there is unfortunately quite a bit of um, scrolling and click on add section. So this particular course is using the flexible format, which I don't recommend for new users, uh, but I will just show you what the flexible format means. The flexible format basically means that inside a section, I can create a subsection. So for example, okay, um, Inside climate activism, this is the this is a week 14 section. If I want to, I can click on subsection and it will create another section which is uh, located inside this section 14. The the um okay. unfortunately I have to keep scrolling down for that. Okay, so here we are. So, um, oh, sorry, I think I, maybe it was clicked somewhere else. <laughs> I have to open it again because it's not viewable now. My apologies, I'm scrolling, okay. So this topic 18, um, it's actually a topic that is uh, a subsection 
under this topic 14. Okay, but um, this is, like I said, a little bit more advanced, so I wouldn't recommend you to use it. I just wanted to show what a subsection means. So I'm going to delete that subsection now. Okay, so now just talking a little bit about, you know, ensuring that our course page is um, not too long in terms of having to scroll down all the time. So if you noticed, all right, um, let's just look at this one particular section here. If you notice, there is an arrow here where I can, um, where we can collapse the section. And when we click on this little arrow to collapse the section, what happens is that we will only see the title of the section, which is you know, 14 Climate Activism Guest Lecture. Uh, and we won't see all we won't see all the rest of these links underneath it. So if you click on that, all the other links um, disappear. You don't see it. You only see what we have actually added underneath or inside, not the links, but all, only the content that we have typed in the section information. So the section information, how do we edit the section information? It's by clicking on this settings button just above um, the section name. Okay, you can click on that. And writing this information in the section summary. So the reason that some of us end up with so much information, uh, I mean, so much content, and we have to keep scrolling down, it's because many of us, uh, or some of us, write everything in this summary section. Okay, meaning that any information, any notes, uh, we just kind of like write so that we write it here so that instead of just a few lines, we might actually be writing, you know, um, dozens of lines. And then what happens is that everything that you write in the summary to the section will be shown um, and will actually be displayed in the main page. Um, in the main spectrum page. So try if you don't want your spectrum page to be too long, try to avoid um, writing too much here. So basically what we tend to do, or what I tend to do with my, with my colleagues is that we will just write um, key information that the students need. Um, sometimes for physical classes, we don't even write anything in the summary. We just leave it blank. But because this is a fully um, hundred percent fully online class. So we actually uh include the instructions or the information for that particular class. So for week fourteen, we instruct students to record their attendance. So this is actually a link that goes back to that attendance link that I showed in the attendance and absences section at the top of the page, and we give them instructions to remind them that you know the lecture will start at three p.m. And they will have to also do learning assessment. Um, they're learning reflection too, which is an assessment from 4 p.m. onwards. And we write here, live synchronous lecture via MS Team so that they know that in week 14, um, on the date, and there's actually a date there, on uh, 19 January, they have a live synchronous lecture on MS Teams. Um, the reason we put this in here is because sometimes they don't have live lectures. They just have asynchronous or self-paced um, modules that they need to do. Okay. Um, so just now, if you remember, we collapsed the sections so that you cannot see um, the links there. But if we expand it, then you know, um, you'll be able to see the links there. A very important note. Anytime we change anything in the settings, we have to always save changes because Spectrum doesn't automatically save. And I have had experience of like doing a lot of stuff, writing a lot of stuff um, in the summary, and then suddenly I forget to save changes and then it's all gone. <laughs> so just be careful with that. Okay, so let's go back out again to the main page. I'm gonna show now um, how the page uh, looks like. Okay, right now, let me just open this again. So right now, Okay, I'm just show a short view. Right now, as you can see, you know, um, the page is quite long because you can see all the links um, for each of the section, all the links and the content, uh, not the content, but the links to the content, the links to the material 
for every single week. So what I'm going to do now in order to make this page look uh, neater and shorter is I'm going to collapse um, all of the sections so that we only see the section um, heading. Okay. We cannot do much with the um, general section. Okay, nothing much to collapse there. So I'm going to start now with um, this first section, okay, called the first week section. Okay, we're going to collapse that. Uh, going to collapse the, the second week section is already collapsed. The third week section, now just as you can see here, don't worry if you cannot read it, uh, it's not, so much for you to read, but you can see here there's a lot of information. So we collapse it. And now it's only the summary that you see. So I'm going to collapse um, week four, collapse week five, sec collapse the section for, um, I think I'll just do a few. I won't go all the way down to week 14. So let me just collapse. Um, oh, I don't know what happened to weeks six and seven. Um, that might have been a public holiday. Uh, yes, I believe it was a public holiday because, um, or maybe it was a mid-semester break. For this particular course, I didn't put in the mid-semester break, but I'll show you another course where I actually put in a section, which is completely empty. All I have is a section name, which says mid-semester break and the date for that. And if there's a public holiday where we don't have class, I also put in just a section name, public holiday, and put in the date for that, which allows me to helps me to sort of like remember when the public holidays are. Okay. So um okay, as you can see now, we have collapsed. Oh wait, this is not collapsed yet. So as you can see, we have collapsed many of the sections. Okay. And so when it's collapsed, what happens is that there's fewer information. So if I wanted to say scroll down to week um, four, I don't have to go through all of the links. Um, I don't have to scroll through all the links to week two, week one and week three. I can just scroll just a little bit. So it makes it a little bit shorter. Okay, I'm going to stop now, um, but I will after this uh go into the next section of the webinar which is um organizing your learning materials but before that if there are any questions um this would be a good time to ask if you have any questions about the um course structure or the spectrum page structure so i'm just going to check um the chat there's one thing there okay so there's a question here uh from dr zaraini uh, if we collapse it, does it happen to student view as well, or it just happens only to our view? Okay. Um, I believe it happens both to our view and the student view. However, it also depends on how the student kind of like, um, uh, what do you call it? How the student, um, what the student's settings are. So, um, yeah, actually, I'm not so sure, but I think if we collapse it, it gets collapsed for for all. Um, but we can also check with our students. I probably go, need to go back and, and check with that. But what I do is that I show my students sometimes if they are like first year students, um, first year, first semester students, I kind of take them through um, to show them the different functions a little bit in spectrum and to explain to them what happens if I collapse, um, if I collapse or if I expand um, a section. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Zerani for asking that question. It's actually a good reminder for me to actually check um, whether or not it affects student view. Okay, is it possible, the next section from Dr., uh, next question, Dr. Rezaida, is it possible to collapse if we organize using the weekly mode? Yes, the weekly mode and the topic mode is um, essentially almost exactly the same. I think the only difference is that with the weekly mode, um, the section heading is automatically named week one, week two, week three. Uh, and if you want to change it, you have to go into the settings and click something custom. Uh, like there's a place where you can change that. But in the topic section, the section name is empty. So we can, or, or I think it's written as topic one, topic two, topic three. 
And then we actually by default can easily um, just rename the section. Okay, now the next question from Dr. Ashraf, is there a way to combine different course codes, old codes with new codes content, rather than managing content separately twice in different spectrum page? Unfortunately, sadly, I don't think there is a way um, to do that um, unless, uh, yeah, uh, from my experience, uh, there is, we're not able to do that because we don't have access to um, creating courses. We only have access to editing courses or editing a Spectrum course page. Um, so there is no way from my understanding to combine the different course codes, um, but there is a way, uh, but this is, I think you can only do this if you are, um, Okay, I'm not so sure how, but there is a way to add students from, basically there is a way for us to add students and even add co-instructors unofficially, which means it's not linked to um, the Maya system, it's not linked to the students, um, and it's not linked, I think, to our uh, human resource management systems. But there is a way to actually add students and add um, instructors and what a possible way around it if you have um, two course codes um, but you're actually teaching you know one set of students just that they, they come from maybe different cohorts and they have like two separate course codes um, is to okay let me just uh, come out from here to deal with that let me just show you how to do that uh, how to add students and how to add instructors into a course okay so let's just go to um, the main section or the main, the top part of the um, spectrum page. Click, uh, make sure that editing is on and you can tell that you are able to edit when the button actually says turn editing off. And when you see all these like um, arrows and settings and you scroll down, you can see the arrows and the edit buttons there. Okay, so go to the, um, course edit settings um oh no no i'm sorry yes click on this um let me just make it bigger okay now click on the settings button then scroll down and click more then after you click more you will have under the course administration page uh, a tab called um users so click on the tab called users and then click on enrollment methods. So enrolled users are the students and the lecturers who have already been added to the course by AASD through pulling our names from Maya. Um, but we can also add uh, instructors and add students, um, people who are already in UM or only people who are in UM and active with a UM username by clicking on enrollment methods. Okay, so if we click on enrollment methods, okay, there is an option called manual enrollment. And there is a little button here that shows that you can enroll users, which means you can add a user. So if you want to enroll users, for example, um, you can type here at the search bottom here, somebody's name. Um, I am going to type a name of one of my students, um, okay? Simply because uh, uh, I know she wouldn't mind. So her, her name is also Amira, by the way. Okay, oh, all right. So maybe that's not coming out. My apologies for that. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. These are enrolled users. Sorry, my, my mistake. Uh, if I wanted to search for somebody who is already enrolled in the course, then I can click um, on this uh, search button here and type their name to search for them. But actually, what we want to do right now is to find someone who is not enrolled in the course and then uh, search for their name so that we can enroll them. Okay. 
So this is not me, by the way. It is uh, one of my students. Her name happens to be Amira as well. So uh, now I've typed and Amira Yusuf um, appears here. So uh, she actually has two usernames. I'm not sure why, but um, so I can click on this particular user, this Amira Binti Yusuf with this metric number, click her name and then um, decide whether I want to add her as a student or if I want to add her as a co-instructor, which means that she has access to edit the Spectrum page, or if I want to add her as a non-editing instructor, which means that she um, can view the page but she doesn't have access and she can view everything that the instructor can view, but she doesn't have access to edit the Spectrum page. So if you have not so many students in the two different, I think this is for Dr. Ashra, if you have not too many students and it's still doable uh, that you can look for them and add them, you can actually do it this way, add them to the Spectrum course page that you want to use as the main one. Um, and just sort of like, you know, click this button. And now, um, you remember just now the Amira Binti Yusuf, uh, whose metric number started with 17. She is no longer not enrolled, but she is actually now, um, in the enrolled users list. I can check that by searching her name and there she is because we've already added her. Um, so of course, this only works, uh, it's only feasible if you have just a few people you want to add. I guess, you know, maybe up to 10, 20, it's still doable, but a bit tiring. But of course, if you have like too many students that you need to add, that might be um that might be a little bit, a little bit difficult, um, unfortunately. But another way that you can do is to actually um uh if make a request, uh I think you will need to make the request through your faculty um, to make a request to the um, AASD or the Jabatan, um, the IT department, uh, for them to add the list of students that you have from the old code and add them to the Spectrum page in the new code. So when they do that, the students will be added there, but this will in no way have any bearing on their Maya. Uh, in Maya, you will still have two separate courses. There is, I, I believe there is no way at all that you can combine the two courses in Maya when you're entering your marks and, and so forth. Uh, but for the purposes of blended learning and using just one spectrum course, that's a possibility that you can try to request, except that it might take time. So you probably have to go back and forth. Um, you know, maybe the people who say that you cannot do it. Uh, so it, it, take, it might take a little bit, uh, a little bit of um, emailing back and forth, but I think it might be possible apart from this, um, this way. Um, and just to mention though, uh, as I mentioned, it's not just adding students, you can also add um, instructors. So this means that um, if you want to kind of like um, add a colleague or add a um, maybe a PhD student, uh, maybe a graduate teaching assistant, a GTA, um, who might be assisting you with the course, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you have to add them manually. You have to enroll them manually because I don't think that's something that AASD will do. So this is the way to, to enroll it. So for example, now, if I wanted to add, um, let's just pretend that this is another person, okay? Um, or maybe let's just use somebody else's uh, name. Um, I'll just- You can use mine. Oh, okay, sure. Can you spell your name? Uh it's Linda. Oh, Linda. Sorry, oh, sorry. Linda. I didn't recognize you. Sorry, Linda. Okay. okay. So um, so now if I want to add um, for Linda Binti Jamaluddin as an instructor, let's just say that Linda is a PhD student and she is a graduate teaching assistant or a GTA for this course, um, then I can add her and just add her as a co-instructor. And she'll be added here, but I don't see it. Uh, I can recheck and confirm by just searching her name. And there she is um, as an enrolled user. Okay. Thank you, Linda, for allowing me to use that. <laughs> okay, so now let me go to um, back 
to, let's see. All right, okay, so I think that might be um, okay with the questions. So now um, let's go and take a look at, um, let me just close this. Let me go back to the main course page. All right, well, actually let me go back to my PowerPoint slides. Now let's take a look at um, organizing your learning materials, your specific learning materials. Um, okay, I didn't get to show you the other course uh, links. If you would like me to show it, um, just let me know. But I think the course that we just looked at just now is already, um, it encompasses you know, um, all the different structures or approaches that we have. So let me just go back to, okay, to the PowerPoint slide. Okay. So now, now that we can see how to organize or structure the uh, course page, now let's move into organizing the specific sections in the Spectrum course. And this is where we get into actually organizing your learning materials, your specific learning materials um, in your course, uh, in your Spectrum course. Okay. So um, there are, of course, you know, many ways of doing it. So uh, this is one approach that, that I use. And this is actually an approach that I um, first came up with a, uh, I found a need for this approach during teaching um, during COVID uh, when we were doing 100% online teaching. Um, so I found that it was very useful uh, because it actually helped me, not just the students, but it helped me to be able to um, envision my spectrum page not just as you know, um, not just as as some place where I just upload notes, but I envision my Spectrum course page as my classroom. So I actually imagine it as you know how um, we walk into our lecture hall, and every week um, or every time we have a scheduled class, we will walk into our classroom and our students would also walk into their classrooms. So I imagine that now, instead of walking into the classroom, we are walking into the spectrum uh, section for that particular topic or that particular week. And this is how I would organize it. So generally, you know, um, I we, we have like, um, we have this when we have this kind of like a uh, normal culture or practice. When we have class, uh, we walk into the class. We generally would start with a hello, um, you know, how are you, students? Or hello, students. Today we're going to be learning about this topic. So we have kind of like this um, introduction to what's going to happen in that class that's to our class today, what's going to happen in this class today, we have a verbal introduction that we provide to the students, okay? And then after that, um, you know, we say, okay, hello, students. Uh, you know, today we're going to be looking into a topic called um, um, environmental justice. And then we take out our PowerPoint slides and then we start showing our slides on the screen and then we start giving our lecture. Um, or if we don't do our lecture, that's when we start giving instructions to students on what they should be doing. And perhaps uh, then we tell students, you know, number three here, we tell students that, okay, so now I want you to get into groups and discuss um, this particular topic. Uh, subtopic or this discuss this question and after that I want you um, in groups to present uh, what you discussed um, or perhaps uh, we might want them to do you know some other activities but basically we verbally tell them what to do so we are actually instructing them what to do 
And then once, you know, everything, they've done the task, uh, then perhaps it's almost the end of class. And then we basically say, okay, that's it for today, everybody. Uh, make sure you do the homework or make sure you read uh, what, you know, read pages 10 to 14 in the reference book. Um, and uh, I'll see you next week. And that's our goodbyes and wrap up. So what the way that um, I find it, easy to organize that specific section or topic um, in my spectrum page is to basically just transfer what I do in a physical class into the spectrum page. So we would have um, a link where, uh, or maybe a little bit of content, maybe usually in the summary, I might type an um, introduction to that particular topic or week. Uh, that will replace the, you know, the introduction welcome that we give verbally. And then we'll have um, a subsection, or maybe we have several links with the learning materials or the content that we want students to read, or we want students to view, maybe it's a video, or uh, maybe one of us, sometimes we might even give them a podcast that we want students to listen to. So that's kind of like um, replacing uh, or supplementing the lecture that we give. So maybe perhaps in the learning materials, we can also um, provide, uh, we can upload and provide a link. <laughs> Excuse me. We can upload and provide a link to our um, lecture notes uh, or our PowerPoint slides and other materials. And then to replace or to supplement the in-class activities, or perhaps we don't have in-class activities, but after class, uh, we want students to do some activities or tasks, or maybe we might even um, have you know uh, an assessment for them. So then we have another subsection, or we can have another set of one or two links to the online activity or online task that we want them to do in Spectrum. And these, you know, um, just to note, you know, the uh, learning materials and the um, the learning materials and the learning activities, they don't necessarily have to be Spectrum uh, content. They can also simply be links to content or to activities outside of Spectrum. The learning materials, for example, you can actually have a link to a Google uh, Drive or a document in Google Drive or a link to um, an ebook or a link to um, a website. And of course, link to YouTube videos. A lot of us use that. For the learning activities, maybe. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe um, you might use some educational technologies. Uh, maybe you use Mentimeter or you maybe have um, some other, uh, you know, um, websites that you want the students to go into where they have activities that they can do in there. Um, so those can actually be links to things that are outside of Spectrum as well. <clears throat> and for those of you who have not started teaching yet, who have just entered uh, and joined UM, you may, I think, already know what course you'll be teaching next semester. And maybe perhaps you want to already start preparing your materials and preparing um, your teaching for next semester. But you don't have access to Spectrum yet because your Spectrum page is not available yet. You have to wait a few more weeks before the Spectrum page for the course you're teaching next semester to be available. So what you can do now is to actually also follow this um, kind of structure for each topic or for each week where you can start collecting your materials um, that you want to give to students and start collecting the or start preparing or creating the learning activities that you want students to do. And what you can do is actually use a Google Drive, for example, um, and <laughs> upload all the materials or add links to the activities or upload the activities in the Google Drive. So later on, <clears throat> when you receive or when you are added and enrolled to your course spectrum page, all you have to do is just simply um, <clears throat> is just simply add the link 
to uh, it's just simply to to put into spectrum your google doc link or the link to your google drive or the link to the separate activities that you've uploaded um and you've saved the the links um in your google drive for example okay or you can if you don't want to use a Google Drive, you can even just, you know, um, take out a Word document um, and just, uh, or, or a PowerPoint slide um, and just add the links in the Word document or PowerPoint slide. Uh, you can organize your PowerPoint slide or Word document into, you know, different topics that, or different weeks that you'll be teaching. And then later on, when you get your Spectrum page, just simply, um, you know, just copy the link that you've already uh, added into your PowerPoint or, or, or Word document or somewhere and just copy it into Spectrum. So it allows you to um, already, you know, begin preparing without worrying that I don't have my Spectrum page yet. Okay. So um, I'm going to show you an example. <clears throat> Uh, of how this looks like. Uh, and then uh, we can take some questions if you have any questions. So, oh, I have to stop doing that. Okay. <clears throat> Oops, sorry, I seem to be stuck. Okay, now. <laughs> So um, <clears throat> this is an example of one particular section, okay? So this, um, <clears throat> let's just pretend that this is a topic, uh, whatever, the, I'm using the topical um, structure. So of course, we will have maybe, you know, between nine to 14 topics in the course. So now I'm just taking one topic. Um, and this is actually what I use as sort of like a template. Okay, so for topic X, um, whatever that topic it be, I create a, uh, I use subsections or flexible sections. So I create a flexible uh, or a subsection um, with the title lecture pop in welcome and introduction. So basically lecture pop in was just, uh, just something that I used to say, okay, I'm popping in to say hello to the students. Um, and I use um, <clears throat> the uh, page function. You can use the summary. Uh, you can type straight into the spectrum summary if you want. I don't like to use the summary because everything you type in the summary will go into um, the spectrum main page and you cannot collapse it. Uh, so it's going to make the page extra long. So I, I prefer to use links to um, pages. <clears throat> okay. So here is a link to a page, but of course, uh, with the pop-in message, it's just a short one. Um, I, I literally type, hello all. In this lesson, we will learn how to respond to others using active constructive response principles. Okay, so I think this is um, a communication course, okay? And the topic is um, active constructive response. And I tell the students, the lesson contains the following materials for you to watch and read a YouTube video, a journal article. When you finish watching or reading, please do the following activities. Do a quiz, do a reflection, and submit an assignment. And then just a friendly note, enjoy the lesson. Okay. So this thing that I've written here, I'll just make this a little bit bigger. Okay. This kind of like a welcome or intro, um, it's not necessary um, if we are teaching a physical class, uh, what you can simply say is, you know, um, here are the links or here are the, uh, PowerPoint presentations, uh, make sure that you go through it and then, um, also do the tasks, uh, the quiz or the, um, forum that, uh, I told you about. Okay. You can also say something simple as that. Okay. So now, um, so, oops, sorry. Okay. So that is the uh, week or topic intro, this part here. Okay, I just write that in. Um, next, I will have a section or a label. Okay, I'll show you after this how to use a label. Um, so the first one here, uh, number one, lecture pop-in, welcome and intro. Um, I can use a label to actually write that. 
Um, the next section, also I can use a label to write that. So here I have the label. Um, basically, I'm just telling the students, here are all the learning materials, video to watch and article to read. Okay. Um, and this is a link. Okay, let me make that bigger. So under the learning materials uh, subsection, I provide a link to something for them to read. And uh, I use Spectrum page, which is a special kind of like um, uh, one of the, I think, um, resources or, or uh, activities that we can use in Spectrum. So this one is a URL. This is a URL resource. This is a page resource. A page resource is basically um, there's a page in Spectrum I mean, we can uh, click on the page resource and then you can type things up in that page. Um, it's almost like a Word document, except that it's a spectrum page. Okay. So uh, here I maybe provide a link to an article for them to read, or perhaps I actually wrote an article for them to read. Um, so these are the links. Um, it doesn't really matter what kind of resource you use. You know, some people prefer to use URLs. Um, uh, some people prefer to use Spectrum page. You may want to also explore using book or using wiki. It doesn't really matter. Uh, what's important is that you only provide the link and the link you provide a name to that particular link, to that resource, to that learning material, that the students will understand what it is. So this one tells the students specifically, it's a textbook link to an e-book called Organizational Behavior. And this one tells the student that this is an article that um, for them to read. And we use the same kind of principle with the learning activities, okay, for this particular section. Um, uh, this particular topic, I have only one learning activity for them to do after they go through the learning materials, after they basically receive the knowledge. I now want them to practice um, or do a task, and it's just some questions for them to answer, and, and there's a link to that. And finally, uh, there is... And finally, we end this um, topic section with a subsection uh, where I summarize or review the topic. Um, and I can do that by, uh, sorry, oh, excuse me. Okay. My apologies for that. Okay, I'm trying to just, okay, sorry for that. Let me just uh, stop annotating and then I think I can, Oh, maybe that's all I can show on the screen. All right. So um, anyways, the last subsection uh, in this topic X section is my wrap up and summary. So this wrap up and summary, okay, unlike the welcome and intro, the welcome and intro, um, I, during the online, you know, 100% online class during COVID, I actually showed the welcome and intro here so that once the students go into that section um, on the main spectrum page or they click on that section uh, through the main spectrum course uh, through the menu on the left hand side, they will immediately be able to see this so that they don't have to go looking for instructions. The instructions are already there first thing for them to see. With the pop-out message, I don't want to take up so much room making my Spectrum page so long. So instead of writing it all out in the summary, I actually um, write it in a, a Spectrum page um, using the page, page resource in Spectrum. Or I can actually write it in a, um, I can record a video, a short, maybe one or two minute video uh, and then I provide the link to the video. Or I can write a short note, uh, maybe in a Google Doc and provide the link to the Google Doc. Because for the summary, the wrap up and summary, it's not important for it to be, you know, the papa um, shown directly on the um, main spectrum page because uh, it's just basically kind of like um, already the end of it. And um, what I do with the students is to actually tell them 
when you see this, you know, make sure you click on every link. And sometimes, depending on the course, if there are a lot of links, I will even number the links so that students will kind of like be able to see what's number one, the first thing that they should look at, the second thing that they should look at. Um, I find it quite helpful to structure, um, to help, you know, add more organization um, to the uh, to the topic. Okay. So uh, let me just now go a little bit uh, into, uh, um, okay, try to go to the next page. All right. So that just now was um, one kind of like uh, example to look at. Here are several other um, examples. And this is from a different course. Okay. Um, if you can see here, okay. Um, okay. So this is, um, this is um, another course, and this is perhaps week four or topic four. Um, and the topic is constructive journalism. So of course, this whole entire thing is one section in my course page. And I probably have around 10 or 20 sections in that course page, and I number them. So this is the fourth section. Uh, or the fourth topic, uh, which is constructive journalism. That's a topic. So if you remember, uh, for this particular course, um, I decided to number each of the subtopics or each of the um, kind of like subsections under the topic. Um, so here, uh, 4.1 um, is the introduction and welcome. So you can see here, this one includes a welcome note and instructions how to complete the topic. Uh, and it includes uh, a forum for Q&A with the lecturer. So this one, actually, what's inside here, all this thing here, the welcome note, the instructions how to complete the topic, the forum Q&A, it's all included or it's all written uh, and the links are all included in this uh, page resource. So instead of actually having that kind of like longer instruction, like I did during the intro, uh, in the uh, intro or welcome subsection, like we did in the previous um, example. Okay, I'm trying to go back to the previous example. Um, Okay, sorry, for some reason it's not moving. I'm getting a little bit nervous, <laughs> so forgive me. Okay, there it is. Okay, it's just a little bit slow. Okay, so this is the previous example. So as you can see, the welcome here, um, I actually, you know, there is a link for them to click on, but at the same time, I have this uh, information that I provide already out here so that they can already see it because this is a 100% online class. Whereas this class, is a physical class. Um, so uh, I don't have to worry too much about students kind of like getting lost because they can always ask me or I can always tell them during the class itself. So my uh, week, my topic intro for uh, topic number four, it's all inside the resource instead of you know showing it on the main um, page. Okay, so the second section or the second subsection here um, it's my learning materials section. Uh, so basically this is also what we can consider as teaching materials, okay? So here I include um, recorded videos uh, from the lecture. I sometimes record my lecture um, because uh, for me personally, I mean, different people have different you know views about this. It doesn't matter to me if a student doesn't attend class um, as long as they, you know, somehow get the material. So if they want to join remotely, I'm fine with it. If they cannot attend class and they want to view the recording, that's fine as well. But of course, it's not not as, you know, effective. Um, but I do allow them the um, option to do that. So I very often record my um, lectures so that uh, not just for students who didn't attend class, but also for students who cannot follow the class um, while I am teaching live. Um, so now, if you remember, we have uh, a lot of international students and um, some of our international students um, 
struggle with English. Um, and for them, it's hard for them to capture what we're saying if we're speaking live because we have different accents than they do. But uh, with a recording, it allows them to kind of like, you know, go back and listen again if they didn't understand something. And this is also not just for international students, but really for all students. If they want, if they have a lecture recording, it's easy for them to review what they might have missed. You know, it can go back and listen to the lecture. It helps them study as well. And for some students um, who may have problems with language, the recorded videos, um, depending on what um, what, app, what app you use to record the videos, some of them come with transcription and some of them even come with translation. So um, it allows students to follow the lecture um, by reading a transcription uh, while listening to our lecture or even by reading a um, translation. So different people have different views about this, uh, but this is, you know, the, the whole idea of um, trying to be as inclusive as possible to students. Um, and this also includes students who may have learning disabilities who cannot follow our lectures because they cannot hear or they cannot focus for very long. For example, students with ADHD or students um, with, um, you know, autism uh, who may get distracted in class and it's hard for them to hear what we're saying. So having this recorded uh, lectures for them to review later on after class is very useful. Okay, but anyways, back again to our um, organizing the course material. So under the learning materials uh, section, you know, you can have um, your course lecture you can have uh, YouTube videos you want them to see or whatever you want them to read. So similarly here, I provide um, links. So here, I didn't have anything for them to read. Oh yeah, I do, sorry, I do here. So there's two things that I allow them here. One is um, I separate it into videos. Uh, and this, I think, uh, this is my lecture slide um, for the videos. So this is actually two uh, links to my lecture video uh, because I had two PowerPoint slides. Um, and this here are optional resources for them to read or a website for them to go and check out. So I actually label it as optional so they know that it's um, optional. Okay. So um, further below is actually this uh, subsection activity. So here are the tasks um, or assignments or activities that I want students to do. <laughs> so as you can see here, um, <clears throat> this is still under the topic. Um, so there's this specific topic called constructive journalism. So <clears throat> I want them to go into a forum and there's a link to the forum. And there is um, something that they're supposed to do. And here's a Word document <clears throat> for them to download and do um, this sort of like exercise. And um, here is a video lecture that explains how to do um, this particular exercise that I have provided in this Word document. And finally, <clears throat> at the um, I have a section under this, uh, I have a subsection called exam preparation, where for this particular topic, um, I provide or I up uploaded links that um, are important for them to uh, for their exam preparation. And finally, at the bottom of that, let me just remove this, <clears throat> is the uh, summary and conclusion for this topic four, constructive journalism. So the summary and conclusion, um, <clears throat> it includes, as I mentioned just now, just a short concluding summary, uh, maybe some instructions what to do for next week or what to prepare for next week. Um, and usually I would give it either as a link to a short video, a short recorded video of me speaking or a type, uh, a type written, uh, I type up the um, summary and conclusion using a word, uh, using a page resource, which I provide the link to here. But unfortunately, um, I think can't really see it. Yeah, my apologies for that. It got cut off in my copy pasting. Okay. Um, okay, so that is generally, um, let me just, um, okay. So that's generally what uh, I do to organize inside a topic to make it more organized. 
for the students and also for me, um, because it also helps me when I need to sort of like go back and check, uh, you know, have I assigned anything or not. Um, so I think uh, that basically concludes um, what I wanted to share with you. Uh, we can go back to questions now if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like me to show. Um, I'm We officially end at 12 o'clock, but um, it's 12 o'clock, isn't it, Linda? Yes. Yes, okay, yeah. Um, is it okay, Linda, if, if needed, if we add uh, another five minutes or so? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. All right, so let me just take a quick look at the... Um, at the chats. Okay. Oh, the different teaching and learning options uh, recommend for UM students. Uh, oh, yeah. We let me see. Have I gone into? Oh, sorry. Sorry. That was collapsed. Um, okay. Oh, I see. Somebody replied about the. Uh, different okay good good I'm, I'm I'm glad that uh I managed to answer that question a little bit about different options for UM students okay okay no worries so anyone who had to leave early okay so I think um there is no questions in here so we have another three minutes or so if anyone has any questions um I'll just wait around you can just open up your mic um and I'll be here until until 12, I guess, since we don't have too many questions. Okay, so we have one question now from Dr. Yanti. If we have more than one instructor for the subject, can we have separate page for the course? Okay, um, no, we only have one page for one uh, spectrum course uh, and not separate pages for separate um, instructors. So what we can do, however, with, with separate instructors um, is to have uh, separate sections for the um, separate instructors. So for example, if you have, say, three instructors, then um, one of you, maybe the person who is most well-versed with Spectrum, or maybe the course coordinator, can actually first uh, set up and create three separate sections uh, maybe one, the first section is Dr. A, the second section, Dr. B, the third section, Dr. C. And um, here is where using um, flexible format might be useful or using the grid um, sections instead of weekly or topic sections can also be useful because it's easy to kind of like separate the three uh, lecturers. Yeah, so it's really all about how we design the Spectrum page. Um, it's possible to have, you know, even 13 lecturers um, if we design the Spectrum page uh, properly. Okay. You're welcome, Dr. Yanti. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there's three more questions. So let me check as well. Um, so my chat just disappeared. <laughs> Um, I think there's one, oh. Dr. Usama, I think, um, sent a question, but it's directed to me. So I'm ah. not sure if Dr. Usama would like to for it to be public or maybe mistakenly sent to, to me alone. Um, Dr. Usama, are you here? Can I post this question to... Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> I just want to ask, uh, does this um, uh, Spectrum have the uh, mobile or tablet app, just like Google Classroom? Ah, uh, yes, it does. Um, I find that um, I think students use the mobile app quite a lot. Uh, we can download Moodle from the Play Store or the App Store. And then there are instructions there that tell you to sort of like, you know, type in the name of your Moodle site, um, which is Spectrum. Um, Spectrum, by the way, is this learning management system that is based on, it's customized from an open uh, learning management system called Moodle. So yes, you can download the uh, the Moodle app. But uh, what I found is that it is not so easy or it's not as, um, as robust and flexible 
as actually doing, uh, if you want to just check something uh, using the mobile app, it's fine. But if you want to sort of like upload things or arrange things in your course page, it's quite difficult to do that on the mobile app. It's much better to do it on the um, actual browser, the, uh, the actual spectrum uh, in the browser in a desktop computer. Or if you need to use your phone, open your spectrum in a browser in the phone if you need to sort of like edit anything on the page. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I can see the chat now. All right, so let's see. Um, okay. I. All right, so there's one question here from Dr. Um, Nora Norazriana. Uh, what is advisable to upload, prepare all materials in Spectrum for the whole semester in the beginning of the semester, or make it visible to students week by week? Um, I think this depends on on the lecture and depends on the student. Um, for some students, um, well, okay, let me think. Maybe I, I would suggest for students that are already familiar with spectrum, meaning like, you know, semester two or or, or year two onwards, um, if you want to make the whole page visible to students um, at the beginning of the semester, that's probably fine. And in a way, it's probably useful for students who might want to study ahead. But for um, first semester students, um, students who you know, like first year, first semester, or even for um, first semester course uh, master students, um, but more more so for first semester uh, undergrad students, I think it might be better to make it visible week by week so that we don't overwhelm the students and they don't know um, where to look. So um, even if we are very, very organized, uh, you know, first semester students, it's all completely new to them. Some of them have may not have ever used a learning management system before this. Um, perhaps during COVID, their schools just use WhatsApp or something like that. So it can be quite overwhelming. So it's better just to sort of like make it visible week by week. Okay. Um, all right. I think that's, that's probably the last um, question. And it is uh, 12.03. So uh, Linda is requesting um, if everybody can stay for a quick group photo. So I think this will be a good time to do that. And then we can yeah. say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tamir. I'm going to start recording first.